We want to welcome you to Haynes Ministries of Word and Due Season. I'm Steve Haynes. I'm Susan Haynes. I'm Danielle Haynes. And we're going to be going over 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to be going over the spiritual gifts and how the body is a unit. We're one with Christ. Amen. Amen. But I think before we go any further, I want to ask my wife to pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for... Uh, bringing us here together to enjoy and to study your word and to hide it in our heart, Lord, that we might live a victorious life for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, it's always an exciting time to share God's word, to come together. We're two or three are gathered together in his name. There he is in the midst. Amen. That's that's right. There's three of us here. And those of you watching, that just makes even more. Amen. Amen. One will put a thousand to flight. Two will put ten thousand to flight. At those odds, three will put a hundred thousand to flight. Four will put a million to flight. And we have we have thousands of people watching us. So. Amen. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we're going to be going over First uh, Corinthians chapter twelve. I'll be reading from the New International Version. I think my wife has a New King James Version. Mm-hmm. Danielle, do you have the ESV. ESV version? So I'm going to start in verse 1. It says, Now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know, the Corinthians, you know, some of them had come from pagan worship and You know, they were used to listening to evil spirits and this and that and that and this. And so anyway, they've come into the knowledge of Christ and they've gotten saved. And some of them have gotten spiritual gifts. And some of them were starting to think that they were more important than others because they felt like their gift was greater. But notice it says now about spiritual gifts. A gift is something that's given to you. Amen. That's right. It's something you don't earn, you don't merit in any way, shape, or form. Uh, you don't learn it. You don't learn it. Except it's, you do learn how to operate yeah. I mean, properly in order, but it's not something that you attain. It's something that you're open to and God gives you. But it's something that's given to you. And there are even uh, some carnal Corinthian Christians who had operated in the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, some of them were getting spiritually puffed up and spiritual pride and and this and that. And interrupting each other. And and interrupting each other. Like I just did you. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, anyway, Paul didn't want them to be ignorant. So in verse 2 it says, You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. You know, they used to serve idols that had eyes that did not see and serve idols that had mouths but could not speak. They served idols that had ears but could not hear. They were made out of stone, silver, or gold, or just whatever, you know. But but now they serve the true and living God, amen? Amen. And uh, in verse 3 it says, Therefore I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is... Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. You know, he's referring to uh, false teachers, you know, saying, well, this is the way, you know, and, you know, you don't need Jesus and this and that and the other. But, you know, you're speaking by the Holy Spirit if you say Jesus is Lord and so on and you mean it in your heart. But anyway, in verse 4 it says, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. The Holy Spirit is over the gifts. It says in verse 5, There are different kinds of service. Service is offices, but the same Lord. Or ministries. Offices or ministries. uh, Ministries. And Jesus is, is over that. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. God's the one that chooses who gets what gifts. Amen. If you feel like your gift is smaller than somebody else's, it's what God wanted you to have. Amen. Amen. All of our gifts are important. And we're going to find that when we get over to 1 Corinthians 12, 12. 
that no matter what part of the body you belong in in Jesus Christ, you're all important. Amen. Mm -hmm. and no matter how small or how big. Amen. It says in verse 7, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Now, first of all, gifts are to edify the body of Christ. That's Amen. right. You know, it's not to edify you, even though they will and do, but we got to keep in mind that when God gives us a gift, it's, it's to help someone. That's right. It's to help someone. It says in verse 8, To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. How does it say in the New King James? For one is given the word of wisdom. Okay, word of wisdom. Now, notice it says word. You know, it doesn't say a book. It says a word of wisdom. I mean, sometimes God allows us to see in part and know in part. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, a word of wisdom is something that might pertain to the future. Uh, you know, prophets, a lot of time... Uh, will operate in the gifts of the word of wisdom and word of knowledge and discerning of spirits, you know, the revelation gifts. Uh, but uh, uh, the word of wisdom is something that might pertain to the future, something, you know, someone that might tell you of something that might be down the road for you. Then it says to another, the message of knowledge by means of the same spirit. The King James or New King James will say a word of knowledge. But notice it says by the same Spirit. You don't have several spirits giving each one a gift, amen? Yeah. You know, God is the one giving these gifts. That's right. And He doesn't want anybody to be puffed up thinking they're more spiritual than others. Amen. amen. Because as I said, a gift is a gift, a gift is given. It's nothing we've earned or merited by any, Amen. any way. But a, a word of knowledge is something that might be in the present or the past. You know, someone might come up to you and give you a word, you know, uh, a word of something that's going on right now or something that was in Talking the Talking about something that's happened in your life. Yeah. Uh, going on in your life right now. A word of knowledge. But in verse 9, it says, To another faith by the same Spirit. Now, faith is not, here is not referring to saving faith. You know how it takes faith to get saved. This is talking about a supernatural, powerful faith. The kind of faith that can move mountains. Amen. The kind of faith that will pray and blind eyes will be healed. Amen. And, uh, and also in verse 9 it says, To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. Now, gifts of healing... <clears throat> Uh, is a miracle, but we're going to find where miracles is referring to others and just healing here in just a minute. But gifts of healing, you know, there's sometimes someone might have the gift to go up to someone and and they might give them a word of knowledge. You know, so I perceive by the Holy Spirit that you have something wrong right here and they'll put, you know, put your hand right there and sure enough that person might have something wrong there he says but God is going to touch you and heal you which is something in the f short future which is a word of wisdom and then he'll lay his hands on him and they'll pray and God will touch that person uh, through the gifts of healing and they'll be delivered now this doesn't mean that we all flow in every gift or anything just some of us flow in certain gifts and some in other gifts. Amen. Amen. Uh, I don't know if there's any one person that flows in all of them or not. I mean, I, there may have at one time flowed in one or the other. But for the most part, God allows us to have a gift that we use constantly. Yeah. And and we're going to find that in verse uh, as we get into 1 Corinthians 12. And then in verse 10, it says, To another mir miraculous powers... Now, like I said, gifts of healing is a miracle. If someone gets healed, well, it's a miracle. But sometimes someone needs something other than a healing. They might need finances. They might need... To find their long-lost son or to daughter. To find their long-lost son or daughter or, or this or that, you know, and, and just miraculously it happens, you know. Gifts of, 
of, uh, of miracles and to another prophecy uh, you know that's someone that gives a message uh, in church that's uh, uh, given in English but it's an utterance of the Holy Spirit uh, prophecies for edification exhortation and comfort of the body of believers you know you've heard uh, usually during praise and worship or you know when the music kind of quiets down a little bit well someone will rise up and start speaking forth the word of God you know and it, and it's for all believers that are within the hearing of that voice amen then it says to another distinguishing between spirits uh, how does it say there is that um, discerning of discerning spirits. of spirits remember I told you that the Corinthians had come from pagan worship and and uh, these guys were really needing discerning of spirits you know to determine between evil spirits and the Holy Spirit amen that's right so uh, God will give you the ability to distinguish between the Holy Spirit and evil spirits. Amen. And to another speaking in different kinds of tongues. That's where someone uh, this isn't necessarily your prayer language that you use at home. This is someone that will stand up in a church service and give a message in tongues. And then someone else will interpret. Yeah. And to another speaking in different kinds of tongues and, and still to another the interpretation <clears throat> of tongues. There you go. God will never use tongues if there's no one there that can interpret. Now, sometimes the one that gives the tongues doesn't have the interpretation or doesn't have the gift of interpretation. When I first started doing that, uh, I just felt the unction of the Holy Spirit and I'd give forth a message in tongues and I didn't have any idea what the interpretation was. But I could always kind of count on my pastor. As soon as I'd give the message in tongues, I'd be still a moment. And then he'd give forth the interpretation. Uh, and then as I progressed in the Lord and, and, and the things of God and in the Word of God, well, I, pretty soon I'd give a message in tongues and and the interpretation had come, and then God started using me, you know, in prophecy, and so on and so forth. Uh, so when you, these kind of tongues here is what's used to uh, bring edification, exhortation, and comfort to it. You know, there might be some unbelievers come into a church, you know, and they hear this message in tongues, and someone will give, uh, I know the Lord, when uh, when there's unbelievers present, he he the Lord likes to use someone to give a message in tongues and and someone to bring the interpretation because you know it just might pierce the very darkness that's binding these sinners that come into a church service. You know, the very first time I went to a what we called a full gospel church that operated in these gifts. Um, uh, this friend of mine had invited me and she didn't even go to that church. She just had been invited by someone else and the first time we went there together someone gave a message in tongues and then someone else interpreted and this friend of mine ran to the altar and got saved. Yeah. That happens. And so Amen. that's just like what you're saying. It illustrates how that's a, sometimes a sign uh, for unbelievers. The man I... <laughs> Consider my pastor taught us that way yeah, when I went to Bible school. And, and uh, so I always remembered that. Uh, you know, I always wondered, well, Lord, if I have the gift of prophecy, why do I have to do tongues and, and then give the interpretation? Why can't I just do the prophecy? You know, do it in English, you know. And, and uh, so I, as I learned and grew in the Lord and was taught, well, I understood why then. You know, it's as the Spirit wills. It's Amen. As the Spirit, you know, you the obey Holy the Ghost. Holy Spirit. It's His gifts. The Holy Ghost is the one in charge, not us. And so, uh, so we just learn. Amen. So anyway, in verse 11, we're in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11. It says, all these are the work of one and the same Spirit. And he gives them to each one just as he determines. Now, just because he determines to give someone the gift of the word of wisdom and knowledge doesn't mean that 
he loves you more than the one he just gives the gifts of tongues to. That's right. You know. Uh, We're in a lot of trouble when we start comparing our spiritual gifts one to another. Yeah. That, that's not the way to do. Amen. We should just be seeking to have a closer relationship with the Lord and to do his will. That is exactly right. And leave the gifts yeah. up to God. Yeah. And uh, we're going to find in 1 Corinthians 12, 12, uh, as we give the analogy of the body of Christ being a body, that we're to look to the head, which is Jesus. Amen. We're to look to the head, who's Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's our commander in chief, and he's our head. Uh, did you have any comments, any of, either one of you? I think I already said mine. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, Susie, why don't you read uh, verses 7 through 11 in the New King James Version. Just, just read those. Okay, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individual as he wills. Amen. It's as he wills. And as we come to 1 Corinthians 12, 12, we're going to look at one body and many parts. Amen. And that's what we are, is many parts of the body of Christ. And it says in verse 12, the body is a unit. We are a unit. Though it is made up of many parts, and though all of its parts are many, they form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. You know, the Holy Spirit just indwells within us, amen. Christ lives in my heart. You know, it's amazing. Uh, you know, in the Old Testament, the prophets, priests, and kings were the only ones that had anything to do with the, that the Holy Spirit had anything to do with, and he did not dwell inside of them. He just came upon them. Came upon them. But all believers that know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you know, we have the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. And Christ lives within us. The one that created the heaven and the earth Amen. lives within us. Amen. Amen. Did you have something you wanted? No, to? I was just blessing me what you said. Okay. Ah, uh, now in verse 14, <clears throat> it says, Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason cease to be a part of the body. Now what is this trying to say? Okay, is the foot going to tear itself away from your body and suddenly become a hand? It'd look kind of funny if I had a foot hanging from my arm. Amen. What God is trying to say here is, okay, I've given this one the gift of discerning a spirit. But he decides, I don't want this gift. I want the gift of the word of wisdom because I want it. I don't care what God wants. He wants to tear himself away and do, you know, put himself in another place of the body. That's not what God wants us to do. If God made us a foot, he wants us to be the foot to the best of our ability. Amen. If God made us a hand, he wants us to be the hand to the body of Christ in the best way that we can. Amen. Okay. So if God's given you this gift, he wants you to use that gift. Amen. 
Forget about trying to get that gift over there. If God wants you to have that gift over there, he's going to eventually give it to you. Amen. So anyway, uh, and then verse 16 says, And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, uh, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? Well, if everybody prophesied, who would be the ones to give the word of wisdom? If everybody gave a word of wisdom, who would do the, be the one to give them to do the miracles or the acts of faith? Amen. Amen. In verse 18 it says, But in fact God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now, okay, so you're the head. So you're the foot, so you're the ear, so you're the eye, okay? And then we start talking about the people that, we're talking about the people that are seen in the church. What about the people that are unseen in the church? What about the nursery workers? What about the children? What about the prayer warriors what that are often the prayer, prayer closets warriors? praying when you don't see them? Just because you can't see them or hear them <clears throat> Or, you know, they're just as important. You know, there's one evangelist. Uh, he ministers literally to hundreds of thousands of people, but he's got prayer warriors back in his home office interceding, amen? Yes. He's got them interceding. I mean, they're not seen. They're not seen by these hundreds of thousands of people, but... They're there, and they're just as important as this evangelist. And is. just as, you know, there's spiritual gifts, what you're starting to talk about now is different places in the body of Christ and different offices and different things God has us for us to do as well that we u may use the spiritual gifts in, but God has different administrations and different offices for us to hold. And plus, there's different types of people and vessels that God uses Amen. And to me, when you're talking about uh, verse 23, members of the body, we think to be less honorable. We bestow greater honor on our unpresentable parts. This is in verse 23. Yeah. And things like that. You know, God, you know, we're all different people, too, in different vessels. And some people might not look like the kind of people we want to hang around with. You know, we... Uh, this church we used to go to years ago, we had this one lady that uh, looked like a bag lady. But you know, God used that woman to minister in song to people sometimes. And whenever he did use her, uh, we were just kind of, wow, that yeah. came out of her mouth. And then we had uh, a couple of women in the church that God would actually use in the gifts of prophecy or the gifts of um, tongues and interpretation and these two women were sisters and they had developmental disabilities. Mm -hmm. But God, you know, if you go around despising different members of the body, mm -hmm. you're not going to acknowledge how God's using them. Yeah. We, and or if someone has different problems in their lives or something, and if you're judging them because of the trials that they're going through, and you don't look at the gift or the office that God is using them for, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. God doesn't want us to think one person is more important and less important than the other, we need to be open to Jesus. 
Amen. and the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit, or we're going to miss out on what God has for us. Amen. Anyway, that was, I'll let you continue. Okay. Well, in verse 27, it says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And in the church, God has appointed, first of all, apostles. What does apostles do? Well, a lot of them start churches, amen? You know, not every missionary is an apostle, but every apostle is a missionary. Amen. We think of missionaries as being the lowliest in the field when really they're not. They're the ones out paving the way and out bringing the gospel the to the poor and where no one else wants to go a uh, lot of times. You know, it reminds me of a missionary by the name of Ernest Plymeyer. He went to, I think it was somewhere Tibet. Uh, he paved the way for years. He probably led not very many to the Lord at all, but everywhere he went, he preached the word, he plowed the field. And you know, years later, another missionary went and just reaped a harvest of souls just from that seed that Ernest Plymeyer planted. Uh, you know, he could have been jealous. Uh, well, I didn't lead very many to the Lord, and this guy over here led a, an abundant. You know, but, you know, God used him to plant seed. Yeah. So. And paved the way. And yeah. paved the way. Yeah, and there's been a lot of missionaries God used for that very yeah. purpose. Uh, so don't worry if you're not winning a bunch of souls. Uh, Just be faithful over what God's given you to do. planting seed. Amen. Amen. You're planting seed. Anyway, first of all, apostles, second, prophets. Well, prophets, like I said, a lot of times they'll operate in the gifts of the word of knowledge and word of wisdom and discerning of spirits and, and so on and so forth. They'll operate in the revelation gifts. You know. uh, that doesn't mean that they're just limited to those three gifts. But those are basically some of the main gifts that they operate in. And then third, teachers. Here's teachers. Where would we be without the teachers? Amen? Amen. There'd be a lot of ignorant Christians running around if we didn't have teachers. Yeah. Uh, that's what exactly what the Apostle Paul is trying to do with the Corinthian believers here. He's trying to teach them. He, it says what? It says in verse 1 of Chapter 12, now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. That's where we need teachers, amen? Amen, so we won't be ignorant. Teaching is for believers, preaching is for sinners, amen? Plain and simple. <clears throat> when you preach, you're preaching salvation message. When you teach, you're teaching believers. Okay, it says third teachers, then workers of miracles. Remember, we talked about miracles earlier. Also, those having gifts of healing, we talked about gifts of healing. Those able to help others, that's the uh, gift of helps or the ministry of helps. You know, that could be the ushers, the uh, Sunday school teachers, the nursery workers, the just whatever. The ladies of the church that work in the ladies' missions department. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, those with gifts of administration, those could be like your deacons and elders, you know, they help run the church and so on and so forth, you know. And those speaking in different kinds of tongues. Uh, you know, it says in verse 29, it says, Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? but eagerly desire the greater gifts. What God wants us to do, he's not necessarily saying desire the gifts that'll put you on the platform. He's saying desire the greater gifts that'll make you the most beneficial to the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. If that's, that's right. changing diapers in the church nursery, if that's taking the trash out of the church uh, building, if that's you know, preparing meals for fellowship dinners. If that's preaching boldly the Word of God, you know, whatever it is. If it's speaking in tongues, if it's tongues and interpretation in tongues, and if it's prophecy or 
just whatever. Desire, uh, eagerly desire the greater gifts that God could flow through you to benefit the church. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's quite a gift to be able to teach babies and children too. So don't ever despise, you know, working in the nursery or people that do, because it takes quite a, a gift and an anointing yeah. to be able to teach babies and children as well as children's Amen. church and teenagers. But it says, but eagerly desire the greater gifts, and now I will show you the most excellent way. Susie, read uh, verse 31 there. But earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. You know, next time we come together for a word and new season, we're going to be going over 1 Corinthians 13. It's going to be the love chapter, amen? Mm -hmm. We're going to find that love knows no record of wrong, that it remembers no record of wrongs. and <coughs> It's a chapter you don't want to miss out on. And if you don't have the love of God in your heart, it brings out the point that these spiritual gifts are worthless if you don't have the love yeah. of God in your heart so to use them for God's glory. You're, we're going to we're going to find that love never fails. We may recap over some of First Corinthians twelve before we get in there, so kind of know where we are, what we're talking about. But I think we're going to close right there. And, uh, you know, maybe you've uh, been watching and listening and, and we've been talking about this Jesus. And, and maybe you've heard about Jesus, but you've, uh, you don't, that's all you know about him is maybe a slang word or, or you've heard him in a cuss word or, or, you know, maybe when you were little, your mom and dad drug you off to Sunday school and you kicked and screamed along the way. But maybe you've come to a point in your life that, hey, I want to know more about this Jesus. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to give you an opportunity to know this Jesus. And my wife's going to take over. She'll lead us in a salvation prayer. And she's going to give a few announcements. And uh, I'm just going to turn it right over to her. You know, we desire to, to be closer to the Lord just like He desires for us to be close to Him. So let's make it a point. Let's all read this 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and meditate on these things and desire spiritual gifts and desire them for the right purpose as Pastor Steve was talking about to use to glorify God and, and uh, to bring believers closer to the heart of God and to win the lost. And if you're watching today and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity. This word, this book here, this can be your book too. And so I want you to invite Jesus in your heart. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus died on the cross as punishment for your sins, to pay the penalty for your sins so that you could be forgiven and he rose again from the dead so that you can have the power to live a life of victory pray this prayer father in heaven, father in heaven thank you for sending your son jesus thank you for sending your son jesus to die on the cross for my sins to die on the cross for my sins i believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead i believe in my heart you raised him from the dead Jesus, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my Come sins. into my heart, Come into my heart and, be and be Lord over my life. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. If you prayed that prayer in faith, believing you are now a child of God, get your Holy Bible out. If you don't have one, go get you one and learn God's Word right along with us every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Central Time. And you know, we've talk, been talking about the gifts of the Spirit and but you know if you don't know god's word you won't have any way of knowing someone could call themselves a prophet but if they're not speaking words that agree with god's word then they're not from the lord they're one of these false prophets and you don't want to listen to them. well how do you know the word of god you read it you study it join us go to our website haynesministries.org h-a-n-e-s 
HanesMinistries.org, and you can go back to our archives and begin a Bible study with us that's going to go through the entire Bible. We don't have the whole Bible on there yet, but that is our goal. And uh, please feel free to email us. We thank you for all those of you that send in re uh, prayer requests and comments and responses to our ministry. Uh, please continue to do so. Send us an email to HanesMinistries at gmail.com. That's HanesMinistries at gmail.com. Or call our prayer line, 918-893-5522. That's 918-893-5522. And leave your prayer request or praise report for us. God bless you. We want to hear from you. Amen. God bless.